welcome to the DC Today Thursday edition, uh, final DC Today of the week. We will be back at you tomorrow with the Dividend Cafe. Uh, I've already begun writing what I think will be a kind of longer Dividend Cafe exploring uh, the state of inflation and kind of where things are under the hood um, in light of this week's CPI number and what it just kind of means um, since this inflationary episode began, where we stand and where we believe we are going. So definitely check out Dividend Cafe this weekend. Uh, markets got hit today in what's become a pretty recurring theme where the moments after a Fed announcement are spent with um, a really mixed bag of hedges being unwound or speculative trades being unwound and there being a real difficulty getting transparency in markets as to what uh, a response may be and then in the next day um, getting a bigger move. Now you could say, well, well, look, the market went down today because the Fed hiked rates 50 basis points. But of course, uh, that is ridiculous. The market has known for quite some time they were going to um, raise rates 50 basis points yesterday. And in fact, for a good portion of the last quarter, which is up thousands of points in the market, uh, the expectation might have been that it was even going to be higher. And so um, what was actually new information yesterday? Well, you could say, well, their dot plots were higher. And that's true. Um, the expectations for where the Fed is forecasting the Fed's uh, end run to be moved uh, across this term spectrum, not 25 basis points, but I want to say more like 20 basis points. So you definitely got um, a little move higher there. But I do want to point out the futures market doesn't believe it. The futures market has not priced in that expectation of a higher terminal rate. Um, you know, more or less, uh, the, the Fed funds futures are kind of still where, where they were. Um, and so, you know, look, let me just get this stuff out of the way. Um, as Brian just told you yesterday, the Fed hiked rates up to 425. And uh, that was the 50 basis point hike from yesterday, getting the Fed funds rate to 4.25%. And they did make reference to not expecting cuts in 2024. I want to get back to that. Um, but in terms of the kind of term structure movements, where expectations are up and down different maturities of the Treasury yield curve um, and of the Fed funds rate, um, the, let's focus on the Fed funds rate first. They um, are now on their dot plots forecasting another 75 basis points of increase till they get to that terminal spot at which they pause and then eventually go lower. Um, the Fed funds futures are looking at another 50 or so. And so I think that the disconnect is not necessarily what I'd look to to explain the equity market uh, movement. Uh, equity prices were down about 100 points in the aftermath of uh, on the day yesterday. And then the futures had all night to digest it, didn't move a whole lot. And when I got up this morning at 3.30 in the morning, they were only pointing down a little bit. But then what happened was the retail sales number came out. And the retail sales number um, was down 0.6% in the month of November. X autos, it was down 0.2%, but still worse than expected. And um, I would point out that you could argue a lot of this was related to the very strong month in October. I mean, October was smoking. And so you did get a number that was lower off of a higher number. And yet nine of 13 sectors reported lower than expected retail sales numbers in November. So there was a reasonable amount of breadth to the retail disappointment as well. And then the industrial production number was down 0.2%. We had been expecting about a 0.1% increase. And so then you start saying, OK, are nominal GDP expectations a bit too high? If nominal GDP expectations for Q4 come down, then, uh, you know, which they certainly would if less consumer activity was expected, um, then, you know, all of a sudden, 
the market ends up responding to something a little different than in the last couple of Fed days where the focus was markets don't like that the Fed's still tightening, economy's too hot, gosh darn it, too many jobs, gosh darn it, too much uh, price increase around robust demand. Uh, therefore, we think the Fed is going to be really tight. Therefore, we think the market should sell off. And bond yields would go higher and, uh, and therefore bond prices lower as well. This is a bit different because not only was there all sorts of delays and other causative relationships that I think make more sense about this market sell-off, but the yield curve went down on treasury bonds. So bond market uh, prices went higher as stock market prices went lower. And today, in fact, the 10-year bond yield was down another five basis points, down to 3.45%. So you got a, uh, a NASDAQ down 3.23% today. That's pretty bad with the technology sector down 378 and communication services, its cousin sector down 384. Virtually both of them right there at down 3.8%. Um, and then the best performing sector was still negative, but that was energy at only down 0.53. Uh, so more or less, you had a really interesting high beta sell-off. And you had uh, bond yields going lower, bond prices going higher. And I think that this is a different reason for the markets to sell off than we've seen on past Fed days where now the concern, uh, the heightened volatility would be a byproduct of, wait a second, um, instead of this market, or excuse me, this economy being too hot, do we now uh, need to respond to potential recessionary fears? Um, the initial jobless claims were actually down 20,000, but it was continuing claims we're at their highest level again uh, since February, 1.67 million. Not a super high number by any means, but continuing claims have, have moved higher and kind of stayed there a little bit, just marginally. So as a narrative goes, it makes plenty of sense. Uh, whether or not it plays out that way, we'll see. But the notion that the market has moved past the concern that the Fed is tightening still and inflationary pressures are worsening still and now just simply dealing with some of the potential hangover of Fed tightening, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, very odd things in the yield curve when you see the, the two-year and 10-year really heavily inverted and then other spots of the yield curve not inverted at all. Um, but nevertheless, a day like today was quite odd, the retail sales numbers. Uh, by the way, the market was at one point down, not quite, but near 1,000 points, 970, I think, uh, at the low point, and it closed down 760. So there was about a 200-point rally uh, from the intraday low. Um, and then, like I said, the S&P down 2.5, the NASDAQ was 2.25, and, and then, the, uh, excuse me, the Dow down 2.25, and, and the NASDAQ down 3.25. Um, when all said and done, you got to remember the the Dow was up uh, 500 points uh, earlier in the week, and so you know you're basically kind of back a couple hundred points lower than Friday's level. In just a few days, for all this up and down volatility, you're you're not quite flat. You're a little lower than flat, but not not by much at all. And so this is uh, the higher volatility, higher uncertainty, and higher ongoing. Um, gamesmanship about trying to predict where economic response is going from Fed uh, response. You, a lot of expectations needed to get different responses to get a, a market actionable thesis for one trying to play that game. So I'm going to talk more about inflation uh, tomorrow in Dividend Cafe. Um, I am looking forward to the DC Today on Monday because there's a lot of other news and things I want to unpack. Um, overall, I've already stated where I think we are through the middle point in December. Um, you know, the, the fourth quarter has been monstrous in terms of rally. Uh, certainly bond investors are going to be happy. Um, but that ongoing question as to what the actual recessionary impact will be 
and then therefore how risk assets are to respond. I think that's the bigger question out there. But if you ask me, do I think the market was a one point down nearly a thousand points today because of fears of the Fed tightening? I, I do not. I think the market knows that the Fed um, is slowing its rate of tightening. I think the market uh, has known about the tightening they are doing for some time. And I, I think that um, it's entirely possible, as the Fed Funds futures market is saying, that even into the future, things are not going to go the way uh, the Fed may be forecasting, which would be the historical norm, not the exception to the rule. Um, the dot plot, so to speak, that, that shows where, what Fed governors are predicting they will be at in certain future periods of time uh, has been an almost perfectly unreliable indicator of what actually happens. So we shall see where we are. The Fed, the FOMC will not meet again. The Federal Open Market Committee that sets rate policy uh, will not have another announcement until February 1. So we still have the remainder of December and a long January to get through. And uh, by then, you're going to have a whole lot of extra equipment from me about uh, 2023. Our, our uh, white paper and uh, forecast for the year will be out by then. I'll go ahead and leave it there. Please reach out with any questions at the dctoday.com today. Someone asked a wonderful question about uh, our thoughts on day trading and, and what not only the investment ramifications may be, but um, what we thought of the general practice morally and sensibly speaking. And I gave that my best shot. Feel free to check that out. And I'll look forward to your more questions. I'll look forward to Dividend Cafe tomorrow. Thank you for listening to and watching the DC Today. Thank you.